Joan of Arc was a French peasant girl who was born on January 6, 1412, in the commune Domremy, the current domremy la pucelle Vosges department, region of Lorraine, in the bosom of a rural family. His mother was Isabelle Romay, his father Jacques Daun, and he had three brothers and a sister. France was suffering the occupation and plundering of the English troops, supporting Duke John I of Burgundy, who was fighting for the regency of the Gallic country and for the guardianship of his heirs. In the midst of this harsh context of the Hundred Years' War, Joan, immersed in mysticism, claimed to have divine visions in which the Archangel St. Michael, St. Margaret of Antioch and St. Catherine of Alexandria advised her to lead a pious and devout life, declaring her to be the saviour of France. She was only 16 years old and confronted her family and her parish priest, who tried in vain to dissuade her. Joan had decided to support the French army to stop the English invasion in the name of God's call. She went to the commander of the closest garrison to Lorraine, that of Vaucouleurs, Robert de Baudricourt. This garrison was not besieged by Burgundy, so he managed to contact the heir to the throne, the Dauphin Charles VII of Valois, and told him about her divine mission. At first, Charles VII and the court of the castle of Chinon, Loire Valley, did not believe her, but by that time the English were in control of half of the territory, including Paris, Rouen, and Rams, the city where the French kings were crowned. The socio-political situation of the French kingdom was chaotic. It is said that there were prophecies that France would be saved by a young maiden from the border of Lorraine, and in desperation, Charles decided to give her a theological examination and give her a chance, not yet suspecting that her participation would be decisive in the conflict. At the end of February 1429, accompanied by the army of relief and dressed as a man with armor, sword, and a banner bearing the names of Mary and Jesus, he sent her to the city of Orléans, which was surrounded by enemy troops. The truth is that the French victories came from the hand of this enigmatic young woman. She led an army of between five and 10,000 soldiers. The English invasion had to surrender and withdraw from French territory. With this triumph, Charles VII was crowned on July 17, 1429 in Reims. However, Joan of Arc became a target for the Burgundians and the English. They put a price on her head, and finally England captured her in an ambush in Compiègne, Upper France, on May 23, 1430. She was put on trial for heresy, idolatry, apostasy, desertion, transvestism, and other charges totaling 70. Thus, on February 21, 1431, the tribunal appointed by Bishop Pierre Cochon of Beauvais, a supporter of the Burgundian cause, condemned her to the stake. In the fortifications of the castle of Rouen, where she was confined, in the secular cell where she was imprisoned, there were many unsuccessful attempts of escape and rescue. During the trial, Joan was in a cage bound with chains and shackles. She had no defense, nor could she count on the presence of ecclesiastical members who had been linked to the cause of the French king. In the records of the trial, it is evident that the accused did not testify about her visions, and with respect to whether or not God hated the English, she only said that he would give victory to France and expel the Burgundian and English enemies from her territory. Regarding her male attire, she said that she had no problem in wearing the female clothes offered to her, but testified that some guards had tried to outrage her, and that was why she had gone back to wearing men's clothes. She was supposed to be guarded by nuns, but the court denied her that right because of her escape attempts. 
King Charles VII distanced himself from the situation, and it is believed that it was to avoid further conflict with his foreign enemies, as well as for not wanting to recognize that he had decided to send a commoner to lead his troops as a desperate measure in the face of the English invasion. Finally, on May 4, 1431, Joan of Arc was condemned to the stake because she did not recant or offer any apology for all the charges against her. The court was supported by the Faculty of Theology and Law of Paris, and a ruling was issued that Joan's apparitions were faked and inspired by the devil, that her male garments were blasphemy, that she had abandoned her home and her obligation to serve her parents, and that her refusal to submit to the ecclesiastical court meant a crime of schism and contempt for the Holy Church, that is, apostasy. Although he held firm for several days, he finally abjured to free himself from excommunication. However, her death sentence was not commuted. She was killed at the stake when she was only 19 years old on May 30, 1431, in the Old Market Square in Rouen. Her ashes were thrown into the Seine River. Years later, in 1456, Isabel Romy, her mother, filed a review of the case and got Pope Calixtus III to authorize an inquisitorial tribunal to conduct such a review. The trial was annulled due to procedural flaws. The charges against her were dismissed. She was declared innocent and named a martyr. Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte declared her a national symbol in 1803. In 1909, Pope Pius Tugendh beatified her, and in 1920, Pope Benedict XV canonized her. The Maid of Orléans became a reference for the French national liberation struggle against their foreign enemies. For the governments that came after Charles VII, it was strategic to use her figure as a pillar of the monarchy a heroine who served to legitimize and promote both nationalism and the ideal of what it is to be, a person willing to sacrifice herself for her homeland. It also served for propaganda purposes during the two world wars. Even the anti-clerical left claimed her name for having been a peasant victim of the church. Even the feminist suffragette movement incorporated her into their struggle as a bulwark against patriarchy. Don't close the video yet. If you like everything related to the medieval period, this is your site. If you found this video interesting and would like to see more videos, subscribe, leave us a like and write in the comments what other battle or character you would like to see in the channel. This will help us to grow and keep creating much more content. Now with nothing more to say, we say goodbye.